we want to install our scanner onto the OBD2 connector of the vehicle. You know, by law on OBD2, the connector is going to be located somewhere near the steering column area. It may take a minute or two to find the connector. On this vehicle here, okay, it's right here on the bottom left side of the dash. Another nice feature about OBD2 is there's only one way the connector can plug in. Let's go ahead and connect our code reader. Okay, now we have the OBD2 scanner connected. Something else to mention, if this was an OBD1 vehicle, the diagnostic port could be several different places, including under the hood. With the scanner connected, the next step, we want to go ahead and turn on the ignition. You don't want to start the vehicle, just turn it on. That'll give the scanner a chance to communicate to the onboard computer. Now our first option is to read the codes. That's what we want to do is read the codes. So we'll press enter. And right now the code reader is linking to the onboard computer. Okay, there's our code, PO342. A PO342 is scrolling at the, below the code is telling us that we have a problem with our camshaft sensor. Well, now that we have our codes, we'll go back to our information system and see what steps we need to follow to help determine what the cause of the problem is. Now that you have the codes retrieved, you can begin your basic diagnostic procedures to try to isolate the exact problem with your vehicle. A few words of caution though. Retrieving trouble codes is only the first step in a complete and accurate diagnosis of the vehicle's problem. The temptation when you see a trouble code may be to start replacing parts related to the trouble code. For example, some code descriptions may indicate a high or low voltage reading by a certain sensor, like the oxygen sensor or the throttle position sensor. This doesn't automatically mean the sensor is bad. It could be the sensor reading is only a symptom of a different problem. So you have to diagnose the cause, not the symptom. Your vehicle repair manual is a great place to turn to for information during your diagnosis. Many systems are explained in detail in the repair manual. Also, the manual will include wiring diagrams that can be helpful in determining the root cause of your problem. I also want to mention another great source of information, All Data DIY. All Data is a company that has been providing diagnostic and repair information to professional shops for many years and now they're offering vehicle-specific diagnostic and repair information to customers. The website is alldatadiy.com. You can purchase a subscription for your vehicle and it contains just about all the information you'd find in a repair manual, including wiring diagrams and OBD2 code descriptions. All data will also contain good diagnostic techniques to help you track down the root cause of your check engine light. I use all data quite a bit, so I'll show you how it'll help us here today. And finally, if you reach a point where you aren't sure how to proceed in your diagnosis, it's best to stop and take the vehicle to a certified mechanic. Okay, we have our trouble codes retrieved. Now we need to focus on identifying the cause of the problem. The code description on our rodeo tells us that our fault area is the camshaft position sensor. To help us diagnose the cause, we'll turn to all data. Once you have logged on to the All Data system, click on the link for your vehicle, and then click on All Diagnostic Trouble Codes. Now select Codes by Number and find your code. Okay, here's the information that comes up for fault code PO342. At the top of the screen is a wiring diagram, and underneath that you'll find Diagnostic Aids. The aids are used to cross-reference information that can help you locate the problem faster. The diagnostic tree is further down the page. It's just a list of simple yes or no questions where each answer guides you to another step in the troubleshooting process. By going through the procedure step by step, you can find the cause of the actual problem, which may or may not be the component that the trouble code points to. Well, we know we have a problem with the camshaft sensor, but before we just actually replace the sensor, there's a couple of things we want to look for. One of the most common problems for setting a code like this is the connection is going to the sensor. So that's where we want to start. We want to go ahead and check the wiring harness going to the sensor. Check the plug, make sure none of the terminals are, are damaged or bent or even pushed out. And also check the terminals on the sensor itself. We want to check the wiring harness going to the sensor, make sure the wires aren't, aren't chafed or cut or pinched. So that's our next step. We want to go back to the vehicle and take a good look at the wiring harness going to the sensor. As with any job, to do it right, you'll need the right tools. The nice thing is that jobs today don't require a large, expensive assortment. 
Basic hand tools are generally all you'll need. In case where a specialty tool is required, be sure to check with AutoZone's Loan a Tool program. They have many specialty tools that can help you complete your job a lot quicker and easier. The first things you'll need are a socket set and a repair manual for your specific vehicle. You may also need screwdrivers or pliers to remove some components. Be cautious when working under the hood. If the engine has been running, components will be extremely hot, so be careful what you touch. When working around a running engine, it is important to be alert and never wear loose clothing or a necktie that can get tangled in belts, pulleys, or the fan. If you have to lift the vehicle, never work under it until it has been secured with wheel blocks and securely positioned on jack stands. A hydraulic jack alone is never enough. And always remember to wear your safety glasses. Get the entire DVD for this repair and all other procedures covered in the Complete Car Care Series at your local AutoZone store.